Do you consider yourself uh, ultra competitive? No. No. I'm not as – Which I find interesting on that. That's the difference. I, I look at you and Sean and David, all these all – these, you guys are super competitive, whatever. I've n- really never been like that. And my, my, my whole I, – I don't know. My whole thing is more just get out there and just meet people. Everybody likes you. Be friendly mm-hmm. to everybody. I'm not – you know, I don't talk bad about other producers or whatever. Oh, he's great or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, and – that works for me. Okay. You know, um, what about in, I'm still uh, competitive. I just don't yeah. have that, you know, like, yeah. well, and, beat and, me this and, month and, or whatever. And, and, and I, I've, I've, I've had that through the years, you yeah. know, so that's been one of my driving forces, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to your point, you know, where I am in my career, where I am in my life, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've pulled back on that, on that mindset of, I don't want to lose to this guy. And in turn, what I've done is said, Hey, I lost to this guy. Which, if I, you know, if you look at it from right. that standpoint, you go, you know what? At least he's in my spirit. But more importantly, like you just said, you might have lost to him. Yeah. And I've lost deals to other people that, you know, I won't say names or whatever. Yep. But I know they will. They'll still come back to me first. And even if you lose a deal, you still didn't lose the relate. You still, yep. you still didn't lose. You yep. might have lost that transaction, but big deal. Well, and it's maybe not so much that you lost, but they won. Right. Right. No, just having that mindset. And again, yeah. just uh, be ho- hope, yeah, hoping that, <laughs> hey, if, if somebody, because in, in our worlds, when we're dealing with niche products and the loan sizes that yeah. we're working, you know, you're bound to bump up against yeah. five or six of your normal yeah. guys and gals right. that we compete with. But hence the mentality should be go out there and get a ton more people out there throwing mm-hmm. your names out. Yep. You're going to get more loans than you're going to want to do anyway, and mm-hmm. you're going to lose a handful, and you're not going to care. Yep. So to me, it's like focus on that and creating more call Jim first situations mm-hmm. and, and people. And My mindset one... has always been call Jim second. <laughs> <laughs> that might be one of the few things I disagree with you on. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, being second, what they say in uh, – Another wrong with silver. Yeah, Tal- <laughs> Talladega Nights. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with silver. Oh. And I love you. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of that, man, let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, you had a, you had a period of time – where and don't ask me why I shifted this, but I was just thinking about you know you have to be at a high level almost. It just seems like, especially in the last couple of years mm-hmm. in our world, just you're just going and going and just grinding. You had a stint with Adderall. Oh yeah, yeah. So where where it had a hold of you, and Big time for yeah. Years. So yeah. so walk me through that. When did you you know from a from a vice standpoint? Well, my doctor prescribed it for anxiety. Um, uh, probably within probably five years before I be, I had a, an issue with it, you know, okay. you know and when brain. was this roughly? Oh, like 2005 or whatever. Okay. And you know, the stuff worked or whatever, but I didn't have, you know, I wasn't, I still didn't have, even though I had it, I didn't take more than my, pres- my prescribed amount or whatever. Yeah. But I, I will say this, when you go through a traumatic situation like a divorce and mm-hmm. it's crazy mm-hmm. and you know and we're both immature on both sides or whatever mm-hmm. you know you start looking for relief from no. the pain mm-hmm. you know and my thing was i started popping those adderalls and you know partying with friends on the weekend drinking and stuff and mm-hmm. next thing you know i'm like i don't feel normal without this okay and it became something that just and I, of course you build your tolerance up and then you yep. take more yeah, and take more, more and you run out and you go yep. find more yeah and next thing you know like i can't get off this stuff and yeah. so when did you go through divorce? When was that? Uh, 2007. Okay. Yeah. So you start to get on this in 05. Was it, uh, was it yeah. more but focus it became, related? But it became a problem probably uh-huh. in 2012. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a few years after that. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, that, that's, the divorce was 07, but there was a lot of my ex and I kind of at each other. And okay disagreements and yeah. stuff and just it built it was just up an over. escape to a degree it's escape, yeah. yeah okay and yeah. then when did you remarry with uh, katie when did y'all remarry? uh 2017 okay so you had a window there right yeah. you had a window there with it you were just and i you know i met her unfortunately when i was still hung up on that stuff okay and honestly i don't think i would be where i'm at sober from that nonsense it was it wasn't for her okay you know, having a stable person in your yep. life that you know really loves you and mm-hmm. is there for you that mm-hmm. was that was huge for me so how did you how did you overcome that right when, at what point did you and you know you said that she was there to help you but started getting heart issue you know heart you know tachycardia whatever it's called mm-hmm. and shocks and i was like what is going on here and I, you know and that fear of death of what i've done to myself that yeah. was a major motivating thing okay you know and it was so you know, 
anti what I'm about as far as health and fitness. So, yep. you know, and what's crazy is you're hooked on it and you're a fitness guy and you're like, I can't believe I'm actually hooked on it. I mean, Jim, Jim Jordan, yep. Mr. Fitness Guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. That, you know, that stuff all should be banned. It's unbelievable. You know, and, and now it's they're a, lacing, you know, fentanyl, you know, with and you, that's the big. Yeah. 40% know. of all the pills coming across the border are that have have, le- have lethal doses of fentanyl. Is that right? There's no quality control with that shit. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's not. I mean, it's coming, yeah. you know, illegally over the border. Mm. So, of course, that's the case. What about, <clears throat> what about other, uh, I don't want to say vices, but. Yeah, let's say other vices that you've struggled with over the years to become the better version of yourself. I would say the biggest vice was not believing in yourself okay. and con- and constantly awfulizing on it and almost con- almost like using the negative energy as motivation, you know, as a driving force. You can you can okay. you can go after and do well and perform, but you could also make yourself miserable the entire time. Okay. And I chose kind of more of that path, self-destructive kind of path. Not just, you went down that road for a period of time. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. When uh, it, was that? Was the divorce uh, a key ingredient to that, or no? I'll be honest with you. I probably, I probably came out of that dark part of my life probably three years ago. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we started becoming, you know, closer friends. Mm-hmm. I mean, within the past three to five years. But I'm just trying to think when that was because. You, when we started hanging out and spending more time together, you weren't dark. You know, were you just come? Were, I'm a good actor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're a great loan officer, good actor. Great loan officer, good actor. Yeah. Moderate yeah. lover. Mm-hmm. Moderate lover. <laughs> Fair to moderate. <laughs> <clears throat> but you, so you, it's just been of recent times. Now, you, w- one of, if not your best friend in the world, passed away too through all of this. Frank. Frank, Frank. Yeah. yeah. And he was, he was, he had an injury, got hung up on, on pain pills. Yep. Started, you know, getting counterfeit stuff because he wouldn't get a, you know, doctor wouldn't prescribe more and, you know, and it just. He got a bad dose of some. Okay. And when was that? Uh, That happened in, that happened three, three years ago this January. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. At some point, you decided that, to make a that shift. That was very motivating. Seeing, yeah. you know, when you finally lose somebody who's so close, you've known since you were 17, 16 years old, yeah. and you that person is no longer here, and mm-hmm. you know why, and you're mm-hmm. like, wait, wait, what am I doing? Yep. You know? Mm-hmm. Still dabbling in this and that every now and then, partying, and, you know, mm-hmm. and that- Enough that, of that, that, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, then, um, and what, are, are you, you're 50 or 51? I'm trying- 49. 49. Okay. When do you turn 50? April. April. So, it's right around the corner. I got to- Make April a note to 10th. be. I gotta be in. I gotta be in the states for yeah. that. We're still trying to figure out where we're gonna. We're gonna, go. we're gonna have an Adderall party. Got- <laughs> <laughs> oh, that stuff is awful. Uh, yeah. All, yeah. It's just everybody's full of shit. I mean, yeah. you can go get a prescription for that nonsense all yeah. day long. Yeah. And lie your ass off to a doctor and they're righteous. They will it's, for it's that. Incredible. It's incredible. And if you don't have ADD, which most people don't, it makes you ADD. Yeah. So. I Not took it for a period of time, man, yeah. and and um, because I thought that you know, in, in our world, mm-hmm. you almost, um, you know, I, I would commend myself for being, you know, partially ADD because I was like, that's how I'm able to accomplish everything yeah. that I do. Because I, well, yeah. no, that's not true. You know, I'm t- given ten percent of this and eight percent of that and twelve percent mm-hmm. of that, and then all of a sudden, I'm not coming up with a hundred percent of what I need to accomplish, right? right? But whenever I would. Whenever I was taking the Adderall, man, I will agree with you. I was like, "Whoa, this is, I can focus, or I feel really well, good." It's a it, yes, you really, it, it, you make you think you are, but mm-hmm. it actually makes you worse. And and I and I I guess I understood that or recognized you that start, you try to do a bunch of different things at one time, but you're yeah. really not moving the needle on anything. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, you just think you are. You think you are. Okay. Right. And oh, we move into it like you feel like life's great, and yep. you, you know, and you keep chasing. That's a problem. You keep chasing that emotion because yep. it gives you this euphoria about life is so great, and oh my gosh, I love everybody. Well, and I knew, I knew, don't I was it, like, folks. well, yeah, don't do it. I, <laughs> but I was like, I knew when I was young, I was like, man, I, you know, I, I'm better than this, or I feel like I can be, and yeah. and you know, maybe I can find yeah. some other areas. And so that's whenever I really started going into more spirituality and more mm-hmm. meditation. And I know that that's something that's important to you as well. It is. I don't meditate regularly. That I've done it a few times. I did it actually. I did it twice when Ella Grace was born, mm-hmm. and I, we were so just bloody exhausted from her sleep schedule. <laughs> and I did it for like thirty minutes with the noise canceling headphones on the uh-huh. ones that you bought. I yep, did. the ones. That, and yep. I can't tell you how amazing I felt. And then to what this the day, hell? Why am I not doing it today? Why, why are because you not doing it? Because I'm not disciplined for it. Hmm. You know, 